It's loading up. What up, though? Welcome back to the Beef Factory 313 War Stories Podcast, and I'm your host, Juice. And I got a guest for y'all. Y'all need to hear this. Let them know who we got with us today, homeboy. Hey, my name is Jameis Smith, and uh, I'm factually innocent and illegally in prison for the last 25 years. And uh, I just want to share some light on my uh, wrongful conviction. And uh, this is the perfect opportunity to let everybody know that everybody in prison ain't doing crime. So I need support and help because there's a paramount importance that I have for individuals that's moving likewise to uh, free myself from this incarceration, this illegal incarceration. Then let- I had a, 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 a corrupt detective, Detective Barbara Simon. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was the officer in charge of my case. Detective Barbara Simon narrated and wrote a fabricated as allegations of my shooting within a participant's confession that falsely implicated me at the shooting. It's a reporter named Steve Nagelin who has been writing a series of articles about Barbara Simon corruption and illegal interrogation tactics in the Detroit Metro Times. And the name of the article is called The Closure. I am in a I am in part two of the closer and it came out July the thirty first of twenty twenty four. Part one came out uh July the twenty fourth of twenty twenty four. In this article there are two exonerees named Johnson and Scott that Detective Simon coerced two witnesses in their case with the falsely implicating them as the murder. This is the same situation that she did in my case. She falsely implicated me at the murder in a participant's confession. Mm-hmm. I don't know whether everybody up on the extent of the degree of corruption that the Detroit Police Department has been in participating in, but in 1999, no, I, no, I was illegally charged and prosecuted at the height of the Detroit Police corruption. The FBI was investigating the Detroit Police corruption. The FBI thought their investigation on the Detroit Police Department dragged that the Detroit police were arresting innocent people without probable cause. And for every homicide investigation, you know, at least three people were being tossed into lockup until they agreed to cooperate with the Detroit police. Mm-hmm. Detroit had the outstanding history of police corruption that directly connected to my charge shooting. Detective Barbara Simon was diabolical with her manipulation of the to get the tax. You know, Detroit, I know you probably heard about the Detroit Crime Lab. Right. The Detroit Crime Lab falsified evidence in hundreds of cases. Mm-hmm. And the infamous uh, ring of snitches that was uh, publicly exposed in the uh, news articles beginning in the 90s. There's a lot of corruption in the Detroit that has resulted in innocent people being wrongfully incarcerated that has never given attention. And I would love for everyone to please not um, allow me to become another innocent casualty of our corrupt justice system. And my name is Damon Smith. Mm-hmm. And I have an Instagram that you can contact and follow me on called Damon Smith. It's all lowercase. Damon Smith underscore buried alive. I mean, buried underscore being alive. Buried is still B U R I E D. Underscore a lie, Damon Smith underscore buried a lie, or you can contact me personally at jpay.com, Damon Smith 311-644. We have a uh, there is a protest that's going on November the 20th at Wayne County Criminal Justice System 5310 Russell Street at 11 a.m. Okay. I would love. Is at 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Okay. So I would love for anybody who is available to come and participate in this protest because this protest is uh, showing the support that we have that we're not going to allow injustice to just maintain and people to be wrongfully incarcerated. That's right. So let them know how did how did you even get under these officers' radar? Well, I got under the officers' radar because of some young guys who was participating in a, a, in a, in a revenge crime. 
I was okay. with them for a brief moment that day. Mm-hmm. And then they dropped me off at home. When two of them went and got arrested the same night, they never mentioned me as being involved in the crime. Okay. It was the next day when Barbara Simon, which is the cop that we protested against, she had uh, narrated and wrote down one of the participants' confessions. And she implicated me in their confession. I was at work at the time that she was doing this. Mm-hmm. So immediately after I heard that she wanted to question me, I went down to the uh, 1300 Bogan, which is the police station in Detroit, for a question. Okay. Her and I was talking, you know, real casually and nice, and I was ensuring her that I wasn't there at this crime scene with these individuals. And I was dropped off. I didn't have a reason to go to the crime scene. It's not my beef. I didn't know this guy. I never met this guy. I wouldn't even know him if he stepped in the room today. Mm-hmm. So it's like uh, I was ensuring her that, you know, that I was taken home. And then she just all of a sudden, man, just got loud and belligerent. It's like, you want to play this game, then you don't tell me who did the shooting, and I'm going to make you the shooter. And this is mm-hmm. how I became the shooter in this crime. There's no evidence. There's no witnesses. The shooter had on a, a, a mask covering his face. So there was no one to identify me. And this is how she was able to make me the shooter of a crime that I didn't commit. Okay. A crime that I wasn't even present to commit. Right. I was at home. So uh, she, did a, she did a job on me. And it was allowed because I had corrupt judge. Judge Warfield Moore, I don't know if, if anyone ever heard about him. But oh, judge yeah. Warfield Moore oh, was yeah. my judge. And he was suspended for a continuation of misconduct right after my trial. <laughs> Ain't that so? And then my public defender, he, he was acting like the prosecutor's assistant. The public prosecutor. Everything that I was saying, he was just talking about, oh, they ain't got no case against you. Oh, they ain't got nothing against you until they are trial. Then when trial came, I'm like, well, why am I going to trial? I don't have no evidence against me. And he was like, he just walked out the storm, out the bullpen, and so I wasn't even talking to him no more. Get out of here. So that's insufficient of confidence. Yeah, absolutely. And then when I got the trial, well, not not the trial, before trial, even before I picked my jury, I stood up in front of Judge Warfield more, and I asked for this counsel to be released, going to be fired. Judge mm-hmm. Warfield more looked at me and was like, no, we ain't going to do that. We ain't going to wait till we... Uh, get to the trial process and then fire your lawyer. And I'm sitting up here like, but we ain't even started this yet. I already know what he bought to do. Wow. So the fix was in right then and there, bro. You know, the fix was in. No police testified at my uh, at my trial to establish that the allegations in which they accusing me of actually occurred. Right. So nobody set the nobody set the foundation of fact for which the people who did it. The, the you have one minute. Remaining. Uh, to establish the people, what the people who did it mm-hmm. saying actually occurred. Mm-mm-mm. So did y'all have separate trials or y'all went to trial together? Uh, they didn't have a trial. What? They took pleas. They never went to prison. They never came to prison. And this is their crime. They, they just t- gave them plea agreements to blame me for something that I didn't do. So did they? So when you went to trial, did they come to court and say you did it? They testified. They couldn't say I, I did it. Only thing they said was, yeah, he was there. But when it came down, then, with, go ahead, finish. And then to make that uh, to make that even worse, mm-hmm. by them saying that I was there, the judge curated all that. At the end, by reading the jury instruction, a, a, a compass jury instruction that didn't suit the case. Mm-mm-mm. Thank you for using GTL. We have we have Damon right back. Give us one minute. We'll be right back, y'all. True. We back with y'all. We got Damon back. What's going on, bro? Man, everything's beautiful, bro. Everything's beautiful, man. We just uh, working working our way through this system to freedom, man. Mm-hmm. Working out. Uh, I believe you and I left off at, uh, you was asking me, how did I get incarcerated? Yes, yes, we just started there. 
But now after now now did this after my trial was over, they realized that they didn't have enough evidence to convict me. So therefore, my judge read a jury instruction, read an alibi witness jury instruction. And I didn't have an alibi witness do I, I, well, I, I didn't have an alibi witness get on the stand for me, right? Right. Because I got because of my trial attorney, well, my public defender didn't go and get my alibi witness. But the judge still read the alibi witness jury instruction. And the thing that the alibi witness jury instruction do is 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 to tell the jury to decide your case based upon whether or not they believe the testimony of your alibi witness. And since I didn't have an alibi witness to get up there and testify, only thing they had to do was go off of a non-testifying witness which automatically inferred guilt. And they know this. So they don't, right. So they don't have to decide based upon the evidence of the case. They just have to, do, they just have to decide my guilt or my innocence based upon whether or not they believe the testimony of the non-testifying alibi witness. And see, that's why the people need to know that they they cover up their lives with with burying the truth deeper and deeper to make it harder for you to prove your innocence. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Because they Absolutely. pile lie on top of lie and call it law using some type of law tactic. You feel me? That the people not aware Absolutely. of, but the people need to be aware of. Y'all voting these people in these positions. We got the right to vote them out. These people, they work for y'all. They work for the taxpayer. You feel me? So we, we need to start making them abide by the law that they um agreed to follow, that they took the oath to follow. You feel me? And then when they ain't, then they should be called on that, not let them keep burying it. Then they co-workers help bury it. And then they try to string it out. And like your case, you've been down 25 years because they burying the truth, avoiding the situation. How your courts don't want to go against each other. It's a brother. You feel me? And see, that's what the people don't understand. They say, well, appeal it. I'm appealing it to his 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 his, his comrade. They all went Absolutely. to school, they all in these organizations together outside of their job and all that. They they wearing that robe. So they in the brethren with that robe. You feel me? So yes, some some of higher courts that know the truth, and then they tell you, send it back down to smaller courts to tell them to deal with it. You feel me? Instead of saying, hey man, this this absolutely against um the policies, um correct this. Not give them the option, how, how can they clean it up? That's what they be giving. They give them a, a cleanup option. You feel me? And they don't want to clean it up. But you but you right in what you said, and people always shout prison reform. But it's even simpler than what they what they believe it is, because in order to reform our prison. We have the opportunity through the prosecution's office. Mm -hmm. We elect the prosecutor. If we elect prosec prosecutors that are going to be fair and just, then we make a, a, a substantial difference. Exactly. We won't have all these. To start with the prosecutor. Because our justice system is seriously flawed. And that's why Lady Justice got a blindfold on and the skill of justice is unbounded. Because Lady Justice knows that minorities are subject to a lower standard of law. Say that. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, one more other thing that they did to me, man, which is completely unfair, is they put me on the front page of the sports section of the Detroit News already guilty with my name and everything in. So it, it, it was preset. my trial. Preset in people's mind. They went to the media. Absolutely. Absolutely. I didn't mean to cut you off. Go uh, ahead. It went to the media. I didn't mean to cut no, you off. No. no, but uh, I got some I got some pain that I want to share with you, man, uh, before I go. And this is something that uh that I put a lot of my emotions in, uh, and uh I'm, I'm, I'm gonna share with everybody to give my idea of who I am. Let's go. Trapped in prison, chained facing the tree. Our justice system beat me worse than Rodney King. The injustice cut deep. So deep, my soul bleeds through concrete. This is how slavery felt. And the entering the county jail feels like border slave still. Packed in bull pins, inhaling smell the armpits, eating ass, and that's just one man's self. Imagine hundreds awaiting the fate of the old press. Pressed against bars, wrestled with an injustice. The courtroom is the auction and bar. So despite my objections, sentenced to more time than the cost of seven. After judge lands his gavel, 
mentally I unravel. How do I serve God in the natural life sense? Deny my religion, get baptized in the name of prison. The 13th Amendment permits slaves making, making prisons for new plantations. The slave reform is now mass incarceration. My experience is different because I'm absolutely innocent. Most see prison. I see the valley inside of itself. Psalms of David says it best. I will fear no evil for God are with me. I finally understand the meaning. Although negative energy surrounds me, thou art within me, spiritually and physically, like yin and yang. If Martin Luther King had a dream, I'm definitely having a nightmare. The fight for justice is still the same. We're still being killed, locked up, and treated like slaves. Physical freedom is an illusion that's easy to be taken away. A prison number became my name. Razor senses reflect my image as I stare out the window. Bars obstruct my vision, but it lights me. I can't see a way out, so I figure my way out. Fight till I'm knocked down. Survive the 10 count. Next round, I'm going all out. Visualize it. I'm out until my freedom comes about. Let the church say amen. I mean, amen. We might not have the same destiny, but we all survive in the same street. That is until they, just, until they turn on the fire hose and let the dogs off. Now, I know you don't get it, but they do. Ask the memory of Emmett Till, Trayvon Martin, Sandra Bland, Freddie Graves, George Floyd, Mike Brown, Tamara Wright, Eric Grandin, Walter Scott, Frank Smart, Deanna Taylor, Sonia Massey, and the tragic list continues. Social injustice, systemic injustice, all injustice are killing us or wrongfully convicting us. Every injustice needs attention for all of us. Wake up, get fed up because they're victimizing us. And I know you don't get it, but they do. It's called genocide. My name is Damon Smith, and I'm buried alive. Man, that that was deep there. <laughs> that was deep. It wasn't a word lost. Very powerful <laughs> message. I want that to get out. The real Absolutely, get bro. that that's, to the mass that's people. That's how I feel, man. No, shoot. That's how I truly look, feel. Look, look at you being captive, held held hostage for something you ain't did. And then and trying to prove your innocence, they taking you through on um, making you jump through hoops to prove your innocence. That's why I tell young young brothers and sisters, we are already guilty until we prove our innocence. You know what I'm saying? They they set the laws and they know the laws. They went around, they be knowing we we ignorant to the law. That's why they made made up this thing, ignorance to the law ain't no excuse. Absolutely. How that's no excuse. So y'all the ones wrote the law. How are we supposed to know what y'all got going on? You feel me? When we when, when y'all locking us up as children. You feel me? So how ignorance to the law. Not giving us, go ahead. Not go ahead. Giving us adequate representation. Thank you. You you giving us lawyers that's underpaid, lawyers that's gonna do the bare minimum. Only thing they get is five hundred dollars. Ain't nobody gonna defend you for five hundred dollars. Right. And then they just selling us, man, to the, to the system, man, and getting favor for our conviction. And it's not right, man. And we need to come together and we need to stand up together, man, because it'll be gone, bro. There's going to be more innocent individuals that's going to fall victim to a system, man, that don't care about us, bro. Point blank. And we have to, and we have to show that we care. So this is why I ask, man, if everybody, you know, follow me on the Instagram, Damon Smith underscore uh Daniel Smith underscore Barry underscore alive and we can get you know the public to view my case and get the public to see that hey man this guy is really truly innocent. I'm not trying to shoot no moves. I'm not trying to play no damage man. I'm actually innocent. I've been innocent for 26 years and I've been trying to prove to these individuals that I didn't do what they accusing me of doing from the very beginning. Mm-hmm. My story has never wavered, even through the inconsistency of the evidence that they uh, put forth, man. Even though the corrupt detective, the corrupt judge, the, uh, pros uh, the prosecutor, and my public defender that was acting like the prosecutor assistant. I ain't never, man, listen, my story's been the same. And they can check it out. Only thing I'm doing now is going to get the evidence to support myself because I didn't have a lawyer or representation to do that for me. That's right. You have one minute remaining. You can call back. I got money on the phone, too. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Say that again. I got money on the phone. You can call back. Most definitely. Most definitely, bro. But I should have never been charged with this case. The Brady, the Brady law ain't falling. Um, that's not helping under the Brady law? Absolutely. 
I just haven't had the opportunity to present it. I'm just waiting on my opportunity to present all this, the, the Brady violation, the, uh, the uh, firearm expert. I got all that evidence, bro. I'm just waiting on my opportunity to get before somebody that really truly is concerned about, you know, me being free. Well, that's what so we're here for. Support. Absolutely. Support, man. If somebody get behind me and make these people pay attention to what I'm saying, man, I could be freed overnight. You an integrity unit too? Absolutely. I've been in integrity unit for three years. Let's work on I that. You haven't heard enough. Man, make sure you call back, D. For real, call me back. Thank you for using GTL. Y'all hear the brother's story. He actually needs some help. I believe in him. Won't y'all look up his case if y'all don't believe? Because we, we automatically go against each other, don't believe each other. Everybody is not guilty of what they locked up for. I, I've been with a lot, a lot of brothers and I read a lot of different paperwork. And y'all seen it on the news every month. Somebody being released that was falsely accused. Now it took 18 years and all. It shouldn't take that long to prove your innocence. You can't get that time back. Time is priceless. So it, you took 18 years out of that life and you think because you give them a couple of dollars that make things right. People lose their parents. They lose children. They lose friends. They lose their spouses. And all y'all could do is thank y'all getting them some paper. Come on now. But I'm going to pause this here and wait on Damon to come back. Y'all just absorb some of that and, and, and go back and listen to that poem that brother just was demonstrating. It's a very powerful message and, and it's truth in it. I'm Juice and I'll be right back.